Hello students. Last day we have seen the conduction of nerve impulse. Today we are going to start the next part of the chapter neural control and coordination that is transmission of nerve impulse. So earlier we have seen that how the nerve impulse will propagate within the neuron or within the nerve. Now we will see that how the neuron will transmit this impulse from one neuron to the next neuron. So this will be called as the transmission of nerve impulse. Okay. So let's just see if it comes to the transmission of nerve impulse. What you need to know that it is the gap. First of all, what we need to know that is the synapse. So what is a synapse? Right. So synapse means remember it is a gap gap between two neurons okay in between the two neurons we are going to have a gap and that gap is called as a synapse now this gap whether some type of chemicals or some neurotransmitters are moving or not depending on that we are going to have two types of synapses one is called as the electrical synapse and another is called as the chemical synapse okay so first of all we'll see what is the electrical synapse so first of all this is a neuron this is the exon of a neuron and this is the dendrite of the next neuron okay so here also same thing this is suppose the exon of a neuron and this will be the dendrite of the next neuron now what is present that if it comes to the electrical synapse what we are going to have some type of junction okay and that is the gap junction so here what is present actually this is a gap junction okay and that's why whenever this neuron gets depolarized this transmission will move from this neuron to the next neuron via this gap junction so it's like the propagation or just like the conduction of nerve impulse it seems like within the same neuron the transmission of nerve impulse occurs but this is not happening in the chemical synapses so in the chemical synapses there is no gap junction present so what is this here in the electrical synapse this is the gap junction okay and due to the presence of the gap junction the trans it seems like it's the conduction of nerve impulse it seems like within the same neuron transmission nerve impulse is moving or propagating but if it is a chemical synapse what happens that in this chemical synapses what we have in the this is C. In case of a synapse, we are going to have three parts. Okay, so what are the three parts? So this one, this gap, gap between the two neurons. This is the synaptic or you can see this is the synaptic knob, right? So this is the synaptic knob here. This is the pre-synaptic membrane, right? In the middle, we have the synaptic cleft, okay, this is the synaptic cleft region and this one, this is the another membrane. So, what is this? This is called as the post-synaptic membrane, okay. So, this is the post-synaptic membrane. Now, in the pre-synaptic, that means in this area, in the synaptic knob area, what we have seen the synaptic cleft region, we don't have anything. So, how this transmission of nerve impulse can be possible, right? So, just see what is here, that some type of neurotransmitters, there are various type of neurotransmitters we have like serotonin, we have acetylcholine, endorphin, these are different types of neurotransmitters we have. So suppose this is one type of neurotransmitters, they are grouped and it is membrane within a membrane that is called as the, this will be called as the synaptic vesicle. Okay, so this will be the synaptic vesicle within which we have the neurotransmitter 
one of a neurotransmitter just take this example acetylcholine right now the next thing that whenever it comes to the post synaptic membrane what is present in the post synaptic membrane what we are going to have some receptors in a post synaptic membrane we are going to have some receptors like this okay so these are the receptors okay like this we are going to have some receptors okay so these receptors are present like this okay first of all how this transmission will be possible right so first of all now impulse is coming through this via this nerve and after that it is moving to the synaptic nerve region in the synaptic nerve region this gets depolarized so negative that means what is happening here sodium ion channels are occurring sodium ion sorry sodium ion channels are opening and that's why the sodium potassium pump is deactivated so inside we develop positive charge and outside we develop negative charge right now what is happening whenever the uh, action membrane potential or we can say AMP is generated within the neuron then what will happen it opens one type of channel that is called as calcium ion channel so here it will open one channel called calcium ion channel so due to the opening of this calcium ion channel the flow of calcium ion will occur and this calcium ion will push this neurotransmitters to the uh, membrane okay and that's how what will happen that the synaptic vesicles will get attached to the lining of the presynaptic membrane and that's how the synaptic vesicles will burst and whenever the synaptic vesicles will burst in the region of the presynaptic membrane it get attached it will burst or exocytose this neurotransmitters acetylcholine so this acetylcholine will be released in the synaptic cleft region and in the cleft region it will transport a little bit and after that it will meet the receptors present on the postsynaptic membrane so the neurotransmitters will get attached to the receptors some of them that will be also present in the synaptic cleft region okay then after that the post synaptic neuron gets activated and action potential will be generated also in this post synaptic neuron so that's why amp that means action membrane potential will be transmitting from one neuron to the next neuron so whenever this is happening what will happen the nerve impulse will be transmitted mm -hmm. then after the transmission of nerve impulse what will be happening after that the uh, whole process the transmission of nerve impulse occurs and after that this neuron the presynaptic neuron will come back to the state of rmp or resting membrane potential so how it will move to the resting membrane potential it will move one second by one second activating the sodium potassium pump deactivating or closing the sodium ion channel right so that's how it will develop inside negative and outside positive and in that period of time calcium ion channels will be closed so whenever the calcium ion channels will be closed what will happen the vesicles the neurotransmitter binding vesicles that will goes up it will take no more they, they will not release any more neurotransmitters so the neurotransmitters which is now in the synaptic cleft region that will be all um, coming back to the uh, uh, vesicles okay but the neurotransmitters which are still attached with the receptors it will not leave this isn't that so in that period of time in this presynaptic neuron already rmp is generated but the neurotransmitter they are attached to the receptors what will happen to them that has to be a one second removed so there will be one enzyme present that is known as it known as for acetylcholine that will be called as acetylcholine choline esterase okay ASC so it's an enzyme 
So this acetylcholine esterase is going to digest the acetylcholine from here. Suppose these are the acetylcholine esterase. It will all digest the acetylcholine that was bonded with the receptors. Okay. So it will dissolve all the acetylcholine from the receptors and that's how the neuro, 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 in these neurotransmitters uh, they will be not attached to the receptors. So that's why the neuron can come back to the earlier state that is the state of polarization. That means it will go to the state of AMP and this is how actually transmission of nerve impulse occurs in the chemical synapses. Okay, so we have seen the two types of neurotrans, uh, sorry, two types of synapses. What are they? One is the electrical synapse, another is the chemical synapse. So, what are the main differences between these two types of synapses? Okay, so here what happens in case of the presence of this gap junction, the transmission, okay, transmission is faster, okay. Why it is faster? Because here there is no uh, neurotransmitters present, so whole mechanism is absent. Why are this gap junction? The propagation of nerve impulse occurs. So that's why there will be no requirement of neurotransmitters here. So that's why transmission is faster in the electrical synapses. But this transmission is slower. It's not that slower, but little slower in the chemical synapses right so the next point where does the electrical synapses present if you can remember the cardiac muscle the one muscle that get attached to the next muscle we have the intercalated disc in the intercalated disc we have the gap junction so in the heart actually we have the electrical synapse so that when the nerve impulse come the uh, muscles of the heart can get depolarized and can contract together so that the pumping of the heart can be possible right now if it is a chemical synapses it is present everywhere throughout our body that is in the cns pns everywhere we are going to have the chemical synapses only right so this is all about the types of uh, neurotransmitters um, sorry we have seen the types of synapses then these are different type of mechanisms we have electrical synapses there is no such type of neurotransmitters involved in the chemical synapses yes neurotransmitters are involved so that's how mechanism of transmission of nerve impulse occurs once again revise the whole process because in the exam it come that the uh, arrange the events in the transmission of nerve impulse first of all in the presynaptic neuron the action membrane potential is generated second point the sodium potassium pump deactivates and uh, and the sodium ion channel increases cause amp in the synaptic nerve due to the uh, high level of sodium ion or due to the amp generated inside the neuron it opens the calcium ion channel due to the inflow of the calcium ion it pushes the synaptic vesicle towards the presynaptic membrane at one period of time presynaptic membrane uh, will be attached to the vesicles the vesicles will burst liberate the neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft in this synaptic cleft region in the postsynaptic region what we have in the postsynaptic membrane we have the mem uh, some receptors neurotransmitter binding receptors so the neurotransmitters will get binded uh, with the receptors present in the postsynaptic membrane later on the transmission of nerve impulse in this way it will be uh, generated and in the postsynaptic membrane in the postsynaptic neuron the transmission of nerve impulse occurred after the transmission the whole procedure that means the whole mechanism will come back once again to the state of polarized so everything will be reversed what will happen no more neurotransmitters will be released because the presynaptic neuron will be in the state of uh, relaxation or rmp the neurotransmitters will be not present in the synaptic cleft but the neurotransmitters attached with the receptors they will be still attached so to digest or to dissolve those neurotransmitters which is attaching to the receptors they will be digested by one enzyme that is called as acetylcholine esterase so this is for the neurotransmitter uh, neurotransmitter acetylcholine so the uh, from the receptors all the acetylcholine will be digested so the receptors will be no more attached to the uh, neurotransmitter so that's 
why how actually the whole mechanism will go back to the state of or that mechanism will be reversed and the presynaptic membrane will come to the state of RMP after the transmission of uh, the nerve impulse and cause AMP in the postsynaptic neuron. So this is how the transmission of nerve impulse occurs in the chemical synapse. So this is how the transmission of nerve impulse occurs. I hope you understand. Thank you.